Hey, and welcome back to The Crochet Crowd, as well as my friends over at Joanne.com. I'm your host, Mikey. We're gonna go on for week number two of The Crochet Mystery. I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about what's going on today, and then we're gonna jump down into the studio and get you started in being able to make your mystery awesome. So this is week number two. For those on the Facebook events page with Joanne, as well as The Crochet Crowd, you know you're ready. You just check out the link and the more information of today's video and you'll find the next set of clues in order to continue and then you can crochet along with me to be able to follow along. So in today's particular project, it is amazing. We are going to take what we think is a square and potentially make it into a diamond shape. So when we think it's like this, maybe it's like that. I don't know, you'll have to stay tuned. So today we're going to get started even more. We're doing a technique I've never done before other than today's tutorial where I had to do it and learn it for the very first time. We're then going to polish it off and make it into a beautiful square and then do some surface crochet again once we're getting near to the end. So without further ado, let's move on to week number two. Let's head on into the studio and let's get started right now. This video has sound alerts added. When you hear this sound, it will be your signal that the segment is finishing up. Press stop and crochet the instructions and then press play again to continue along in your project. So let's begin week number two and in week number two we're now going to take our centerpiece and we are going to tilt it. So we've been thinking that it's going to be looking like this in the afghan but is it? Maybe it's going to be into a diamond shape just like so. You don't know. You'll have to stay tuned for the weeks ahead. So what we're going to do here in this clue is that we are going to then start making this section that you see out here plus we're going to then go all the way around in order to bring it into balance as we go. So we have a diagram like before. We have the written instructions so that you can follow. So our goal then is to do each one of the four sides. You'll have to do it separately and then we'll be completing that. So let's take a look at the diagram itself. So here's what the diagram looks like. The middle section is grayed out because that's from week number one. But we're now gonna move on to week number two. So we're gonna choose any one of the four sides. You have to do the same thing for each one of the sides and you're just gonna work your way back and forth and you're just going to bring the last two stitches together when you go to do that in order to form a triangle. So it gets quicker and quicker the more out that you get and then what we're gonna do then is that we're gonna do the borders as we go all the way around once all four sides are done. So I'm going to quickly review with you on how you do one of these sides and then you're gonna do the other three on your own and then I'll show you how to do the two rounds for the borders after that. So let's begin one corner. So we're going to then do this for all four sides. What I want to point out to your attention right away is that you'll notice that the single crochets look like they're off from each other. That's just the way it is. It's not actually like that in the project. Each single crochet gets a single crochet as you work your way across in row number one. The trick is to make sure that we get the proper number of stitches in row number one. So the first chain two space is gonna have one single crochet and then we just put in a single crochet into each one of the stitches all the way across. I did double check that and everything does work out and then and then we get to the other side. We chain up one and then we put the first two together. We single crochet all the way back across and then we put the last two together. We chain up one, put the first two together, go all the way back across and then put the last two together. So we're always putting two together when we go to do the outside in order to form the perfect triangle. The trick is to know how many stitches to put here and we're gonna review that next. So as we begin we wanna make sure that there is 23 single crochets that go into the side here. So we're gonna get you started and then you're gonna do the same on the other side. Again another 23 will go along this side and in this side and etc. So we just wanna pay attention. I'm only gonna show it one time and then we'll be begin. So let's grab our new yarn and let's get started. So let's get started. We're gonna create a slip knot to begin and we're gonna start in any chain two space right in the last round that we had from the week number one. So let's just create a slip knot and begin. Go right into the chain two space and you're going to fasten on with the slip stitch, chain one and single crochet right into that same chain two space. So that counts as one of the single crochets that has to go across. So how many did we need to in order to get started? We needed a total of 23 so that's one of them. So we're just going to single crochet across all of the single crochets that are in there and to the other side. So let's count these out together. So this is number two, it's three, four, that's five, six, 
seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, and twenty-two, and the next one is in the chain two space. So that's your twenty-three. So I know that I'm starting off right by getting my twenty-three in right off the hop. So let's move on to the next row, row number two. On a sheet of paper I want you to write rows number one through twelve and we just did row number one. Check it off. So come back and now and turn your work and you're going to begin the first row. So chain up one and the first two are gonna become together as two single crochets together. So go right into the very first stitch and pull through and come into the next one going in pull through and then pull through all three loops and that's it uh, a single crochet two together. So the first two stitches just became together. So then you're just gonna single crochet yourself across. You can either count it but I don't see the point of doing that because you know your counts are right based on the last round you, or row you did. So what you can just do is that in the final row, uh, final two stitches that you have when you come across I want you just to put the last two together. I'll see you there in just a moment. So I'm coming across and I'm just looking for my stitches and I have three left so now I just have two left. So the final two become together. So going into the next one, pull through, dive into the next one, pull through and then pull through all three loops and that is single crochet two together. So that was row number two. So check that off on your sheet. So now you're gonna notice that it's gonna start angling in. So now we're gonna begin row number three. So these rows like this all the way from one to eleven are the same. So just chain up one and then just put the first two together. Okay, so just making sure you put them together, pull through all three loops and then just single crochet across. And you'll notice that this will get quicker and quicker because you got less stitches to worry about. So you're eliminating two stitches every time you do a pass. So what I want you to do is this concept all the way to row number 11 and then row number 3 I'll meet you or row number 12 I'll meet you back there and then we're going to show you how to put three together as the conclusion of one of these sides and then you're gonna do the other three on your own. So as you come to the other side the last two stitches come together so just put them together and then that was row number 3. So check that off in your sheet, turn your work and then continue along. If you don't wanna check off anything on your sheet all you can just do is that when you get to the very final there's gonna be three stitches left at the very point and then you know you're done as well. But I would probably just check it off. Make sure that you're getting the work done so that it's equal on all four sides. So I'll see you at the end of row number 11. So literally just a few moments ago I left you to get the rest of these uh, rows done all the way to uh, row number 11 which I just finished. Now this is row number 12 which is the final so chain up one. You only have three stitches left. You're gonna put those three together. So just grab them, yarn over, pull through and you'll have four loops onto your hook. Yarn over and pull through all four loops and you're done. So what you want to just do is it's fasten off at this point and uh, just leave an extra long tail so that you can bury that in afterward and then you're going to restart this all over again and just leave that tail later and then you're going to start on another round. Remember the secret answer to, do the, to doing this is to make sure that you turn it over first and you get the right side of the project in order to begin. So it's right where these are lifted off and then you're gonna start off right in the corner. You're gonna chain up one, single crochet into that one and then all of the, of the stitches across and then there, there will be one in the end here and there will be a total of 23 and then you're gonna continue to get it and then you'll see this happen again. So let's continue to do the rest of the sides here and then I'll leave that for you and then we'll come back and then we'll continue along in today's mystery. 
So as we move forward in today's tutorial, you're going to have all four sides completely done. I cannot believe how fast it actually took me to do this. I shouldn't be surprised it's Bernat Blanket yarn. It always goes quick. So the other side looks just as good. I just gotta uh, get rid of some tails. And now what we're going to do is that we're going to start doing the border work. There's two um, layers all the way around in order to bring this because you'll notice it's kind of flappy and not kind of sitting flat. So what we're going to do is we're gonna take the same color yarn and we're going to circle twice and then we're gonna do another surface overlay to give it the look that you see up here. So let's uh, begin to do round number one but let's go back to the diagram first. So here we're gonna start the diagram again and we're going to start off in one corner. So you can choose any one of the corners that you have. Just commit to one and then you're going to notice that you're going to chain up one and there's gonna be three single crochets in the very corner and that's gonna happen in each one of the corners as you get all the way around. So what you're seeing here is a single crochet basically is in each one of the rows as you go. So there's gonna be a total, remember that there was 12 rows as you went. So there's going to be a total of 12 single crochets evenly along the side of the triangle. So let's count that out. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Just like you see here. And then we jump to the next one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. And then the corner. So, so keep an eye on your stitch counts. Make sure that they work. Don't add in any extra because you don't know what's beyond today's mystery. So let's begin to do the first round. So let's start off in the corner. You're gonna start off with the slip knot just to begin and just for extra security and then what you can do is that you really cannot see your stitches with this particular color but you can feel where those stitches are on the outside. So the goal is to get 12 evenly and then jump to the next one and do 12. So let's start off in the corner. Just going right into a corner attach it with a slip stitch, chain up one, pull everything nice and tight and then back into the same section, same space and you're gonna do three single crochets. So what I would do when I come back around is that I'm gonna lay this down over top of the stitch work and then trap it into position. So I'm gonna move my way down and I wanna do a total of 12. So I'm just gonna lay this down right over top of the line and do 12 single crochets. So one and keep moving down two, three and four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 and 12. Just like you see here. Okay. So then you just jump to the next one. So start on the first side here. Okay. And if you have any tails to weave in just put them in. So one and work your way up the other side. Two, three, that's four, and it's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And then in the corner that is next, I want to make sure I put in three single crochets. So Make sure the straggler that you have here, you put it over top. So one, two, and three. And then just move down the other side here. So again, you wanna do 12 and then jump over and then 12 and then three into the next corner. Please do that same thing going all the way around for this round. When you get all the way back around, you're just going to slip stitch then to the top of the first uh, three that you have, the first single crochet. And then we're going to move on to the next round which will be the last round to do. So what we're going to do, let's start the next round. Let's go back to the chart one more time and then we're just gonna go. Now if you have it buckling at all in any way, let me just uh, zoom out a little bit here. Just gotta take it and just stretch it. Just pull on it and then it'll sit nice and flat for you. So let's uh, continue. Let's go back to the chart one more time.
So we have two more things to do. We still have the last round of the border and then we have the surface overlay which is in the round we just completed and we're going to do single crochets around the post like we had already back way back on round number five in the first week. So what we're going to do then in this one we're going to slip stitch to get ourselves to the middle one of the group of three, chain up two which counts as a half double crochet, two more half double crochets into that same one and then half double crochet in each stitch going all the way across with the exception to the last one which is the third or the middle one of the three and there's three half double crochets and so on. Let's begin the final round and then we're gonna do surface overlay after this. So let's begin the first round. So let's begin the next round. I know it's really hard to see with this yarn. I have to use it because of the, the project. So what we're going to do is that there's three a single crochets that are here. You want to slip stitch to the next one which will take you to the middle one. So if you can probably see it better when it's in front of you versus here on camera. So you're going to chain up two which counts as a half double crochet and in that same one you are going to put in two more half double crochets. So now we're just gonna half double crochet in each of the stitches going across. Just use your fingertips to feel for it if you cannot see it and uh, this yarn is really quite fabulous. I love how it all works out and it's awesome. So you're going to half double crochet in each of them as you go across except for the very middle one of the group of three in the next corner and you'll put in three half double crochets and then you'll continue to move around with one half double crochet each. So please do that all the way around for this round and meet me back here and then we're gonna do something else, something else. Just one last thing. When you get all the way back around don't forget you have your three half double crochets already in the beginning and then you just got a slip stitch to the top of the beginning chain two that was counting as one to bring that to conclusion. You're going to fasten that off and you're gonna weave in your ends as normal and then what we're going to do is that we're just gonna do one round of surface overlay and then this mystery is complete for this week and then we're gonna join in next week to begin again. So let's uh, just go back and we're gonna do some surface overlay. We're gonna use the darker blue and when I come back we'll get started. So coming back to the photo you'll notice that there is a round of blue here. This is the surface overlay that's done on the second last round of the, it's actually the first round of the border but it's the second last round of what we just did and then we're just gonna do a single crochet around the post as we go all the way around in a circle and again it's the same thing that we just did with the, the middle one here in the white. We just wanna go around in order to bring it to conclusion. Let's get started and show you how to do that. So to begin you're going to create a slip knot and you're going to go into the second last round that you had okay and it was uh, pretty easy. It was a single crochet round. So you remember that there's three single crochets that are on in a uh, corner. So you're just gonna pop in one side and out the other. Okay so just put this on the hook first I guess and we just wanna just kinda feel around for our stitches and just go in one side and out the other. Now, there's nothing that attaches to this as well so even if you're off by one or two I, as long as it looks good you can get away with it pretty easily. So I attached it with the slip stitch like so. We're gonna chain up one and then one single crochet into that one again. So I've left a little bit of a longer tail so that I can use it to weave in my ends and you're just gonna just put it out of the way and then just feel for your stitches. Just open things up, come in one side and pop it out the other and single crochet. And you're gonna do that with every stitch. You don't have to do anything special on the corners. You just gotta make sure you just put one single crochet into each post as you go all the way around on that round. So stick to that round only and then when I come back we'll have this done and I'll show you just quickly how to weave in your ends and then you can just get rid of all your tail ends for this week and we're gonna move on then later on in the future weeks to come. So get this done. I'll see you back here in just a moment. As you come all the way back around you'll run out of posts and then you're just gonna slip stitch to the top of the first single crochet that you started with. You're gonna leave an extra long tail and let's just zoom out just a little bit for you there and what we're going to do is just trim it and then just pull through and we're gonna grab a darning needle and we're gonna hide this in. So we're not gonna hide it in the front side, we're gonna hide it in the back side because you don't want it falling out on the front side at all. So what we're gonna do, just take your strand and put it into the darning needle. I like how it can compress down and you're gonna dive right head first into the stitch work keeping in the same color so that you don't see it and just pull it through and this will pull it down and you're gonna turn it over and you're gonna weave it in to the stitch work into the back side. 
if you see the darning needle at all on the front side you've dug too deep. So just stick to the fibers towards the outside of this on the back and you're gonna go back and forth through the fibers at least three times. No less, you don't really need more. So this is two and going back in. So you have to just go through a different path each time you go back and forth so that it gets trapped into position. This yarn is actually really hiding this uh, this yarn in really nicely and so you're just going to grab the other one that you had started with. Feed it into the darning needle and you're gonna wanna deal with all your tails at this end before moving into your next week of clues and you're gonna join me then next week to begin to go even further. Myself, I don't know what I'm getting myself into so I have to wait for my clues at this moment and then I will see you back here at the at the beginning of the next set of clues. See what we're gonna get ourselves into. Now if your project is not sitting down flat, mine's a little not sitting down flat right now. I gotta yank on it and just pull on it a little bit to get it to settle down and uh, I will show you that in just a moment. So this is how you just weave in your ends. So here I am at the end and all I just wanna do is just pull on the outsides just to get it to relax. This triangle section as much as they're awesome, they do provide a bit of tension to it. So you just wanna just pull on it a little bit and to get it to sit out flat and then you're gonna be good to go. So I'm gonna do a little more off camera and then we're gonna come back and as you do more of the afghan as well, it's gonna hold this down from wanting to fold forward as well because we're obviously just in the center of your afghan. So just stretch it out a little bit and don't worry about it too much because you have a lot more to get done as we move along in the clues. So meet me back here next week and we'll get started. Don't forget to post your work in progress photos on our events page and be sure to use our hashtags of Handmade with Joanne as well as the crochet crowd. We want to see your work. We want to be able to help you if we can and we're going to continue our mystery right here next week at the same time. Have a great week. We'll see you and happy hooking. Bye-bye.